get this, they like wash their hair and then they have to wear the hair up because they go to the gym and you're stuck with this really awkward wavy thing that just seems to stay for the rest of the day or for the next few days until you decide to wash your hair again. I have this theory that if you drink your coffee out of like awesome superhero mugs, you automatically get like superpowers after you drink your coffee. It's like totally factual, no joke. Like in my backdrop, yeah, a table. Brisbane, where's that tropical sunny weather? Why are you raining? So today's question that I've been asked a couple of times is should you have a coach and should you have a trainer and also if you do have a coach at what point do you know if you should leave them when do you know that you've learned enough and that you're not going to continue learning from them and you might as well move on to someone better or try something different so this is not a coach are you ready to work are you ready to work if you quit on me again you go home and no one's gonna chase you and this is not a coach. This is a great way to stretch. Yeah. You see? You could do this with your partner at sure. home. Let's ride this energy yeah. out. Yeah. Yes, this fire has just started and we will not put it out. A lot of people have a wrong idea of what a coach actually is. If you want to get great at something, you need a mentor. You need someone that is better than you. You need someone that is going to teach you the way. You can't just expect to get great. Well, now we have the internet, which is amazing. So you can become an expert at something because of the internet, but at the same time, they are your mentors. And if you're doing something a little bit more physical, a little bit more hands-on, then you do need that one-on-one -on -one, and you can't just use the internet to become an expert because you could be doing something. It's like learning Chinese or learning the language in your headphones. And I can say, I can speak Spanish fluently, but really you're saying everything completely wrong. If you speak to someone that actually speaks Spanish, they're like, you're not even saying proper words. You just think you're knowing what you're saying. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. <laughs> eh, blue, blah. Now, if you're a beginner and you're stepping into a new gym environment, I recommend every single person that's never been to a gym before, never done weights, to always get a trainer, always get a coach. For a one session minimum, but up to eight weeks, because you don't know anything. If you, you think you know what you're doing, you think you know what's expected by looking around people, doing a couple of like, looking at articles, but really, you're do a lot of people are doing a lot of things wrong, and if you're if you want to keep this body going until you're 80, 90, 100, then you need to make sure you're not gonna make these mistakes younger. So beginner, first time in the gym, always go to a trainer, always go to an expert. Learn how to do movements correctly, how to squat correctly, how to hinge, how to position your shoulders when you're benching, what is prehab, um, what's the difference between a barbell and a dumbbell, how, what's the difference between a push and a pull movement, the basic things that I think everyone needs to know when they're first starting in a gym. Now, if you wanna get good at anything, any sport, you need a mentor, you need a teacher. So if you wanna get good at yoga, you need a yoga instructor. Yes, you can learn from the internet, but in a way that is a coach, that is a mentor. Um, things, so I'm gonna talk about powerlifting and jiu-jitsu mainly today because they're the things that I'm into. So with powerlifting, I've been lifting weights in a gym. I've had a coach, I've had a mentor uh, for four, three to four years I got the gist of what's going on but if I wanted to get strong in a sport I wanted to train a particular way I want to tweak my technique a little bit I want to use equipment that I wasn't used to like belts and wraps and nose chalk like I wanted to do something that was completely unique to me then I needed to go to a coach and that's why I went to a coach he helps me out mainly largely with my squats I had my deadlift relatively down packed but changing a bench technique, bodybuilders bench differently, powerlifters bench differently, crossfitters, crossfitters don't really bench, they push up. But if you want to do any particular sport, they're all gonna have a different style of technique and it's important to learn how to do that technique for that sport. So for me, I need to learn how to, I want to squat like a powerlifter because I want to get strong. So for me, I went to a powerlifting coach that taught me how to do the movements for that particular sport. Now, if you're getting into a team sport, 
And number one question is, should you have a one, should you do one-on-one -on -one or should you do group? Now, I think that if you're a beginner in yoga, uh, if you're a beginner in something like a jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, boxing, um, rock climbing, things like that, things like that where there's a little bit more of a group environment, I don't think you need one-on-one -on -one coaching at the start. I think you can benefit quite a bit from getting involved in the group and getting help from the other participants in the sport and the other people on the mat. These people are going to teach you the basics of what you need to know and the basics is something that you don't need that really intense. Some people say you should do jiu-jitsu one-on-ones at the start but I think you're going to learn just by being on the mat, just by being around the people making all those mistakes. But once you get to a certain level, so if you're, let's say jiu-jitsu, if you're on the bridge to your like blue belt or you're almost at your purple belt or brown belt or your black belt, uh, like almost a black belt and you have like little tiny tweaks or a particular game like a rubber guard or a delahiva, something that you're not really familiar with, then if you're not going to use the, in the events of the internet, I do recommend that one-on-one -on -one coaching with an expert, say if it's like knee bars, like in, someone that's amazing at that. So again, you're looking for a mentor that's amazing at one particular thing. So if you want general gym fitness, if you want to know if you should have a trainer at the gym, if you don't need motivation, then you don't need one of those screaming motivational coaches. Um, but I do think you, everyone needs to learn how to use a gym correctly and how to use their body correctly. So I do recommend everyone having a trainer at some point. You can find some gyms that have really good group trainers that will allow you to have like a group of three, uh, four people and less. I never recommend a beginner going into a group setting with like 20 or people because you get lost in the sea of people and the trainer's just not really there to keep an eye on your technique or what you're doing. And the thing is, these bodies are supposed to last us. We only have one of them. So, sum up my quick rant. Sorry if I repeated myself. Yes, everyone needs a mentor at least one part of their life. If you want to get really good at something, then you need to find someone for that. If you want to get good at calisthenics, if you really want to get good at rock climbing, if you want to get good at swimming, yes, we can all get the gist of swimming, but if you want to get really good, you want to clean up those twi tweaks, you want to make sure your legs are moving correctly, then go see a coach just once in a blue moon and the, your game is going to improve insane and there's those little things that's going to save you injuries and also a lot of time and effort so that is my sum up and what do you guys think do you guys think that you need a coach with a jiu-jitsu question do you guys when do you think it's a good idea to get one-on-one -on -one coaching from a jiu-jitsu coach do you think you should do privates at the start or this is any martial art do you think you should do privates at the start or do you think you should wait until a certain level before you start doing privates? Because I'm interested in that one. Um, and thank you so much for checking out my channel. I've had a bunch of new subscribers in the last few months. I'm hitting over 6,000 subs, which is amazing. My goal this 218 was to get 1,000 subs and I did that within the first week of 218. So thank you guys so much. I couldn't have done it without you. Now I'm going to be answering some questions. So questions below and I'll love to make some videos and answer them. I am actually moving next week so I am setting up a cool little studio area so this whole background thing will eventually change. In the meantime, please uh, press that big red subscribe button if you haven't already and keep being strong, happy and healthy.